Hey there. In this video, I want to review some options for translating the superclass subclass arrangement that results from the uh, extended entity relationship diagram. Uh, you got basically three and a half options, and there are advantages and disadvantages to each, and there are circumstances where each are applicable and where they are not. So let's get into it first with a review of generalization and specialization very quickly. So we have a situation here where we have uh, an entity related to employees in an organization and all employees have certain attributes uh, related to them. Uh, here, for example, employee number, and I'm sure there's lots of others, name and contact information and so forth. But there are also subclasses of the employees that have information pertinent to them that is not in turn pertinent to other subtypes of employees. So programmers have languages they know, engineers have an engineering type, or maybe they have certifications or endorsements. Admins have uh, words per minute and Microsoft applications that they're familiar with, something along those lines. And that's a basic situation. We're saying nothing at this point about constraints. I would encourage you, if you're fuzzy on the constraints involved in superclass, subclass, EER arrangements, to review that. There's a separate video for that. Let's jump right into translations. Uh, and when one of the reasons we're not talking about constraints is the first translation technique does not require uh, any knowledge about the constraints because it's universal. So let's talk about the universal one. Universal, and what does it happen? Where, uh, how, how do you do it? Uh, we get super and each sub all get a relation. What does that look like? You've got employee and emp number and name and phone number and all the other common attributes. We've got programmer. And the one thing to take note of is each of the subclasses will have repeating in it the primary key of the superclass. So a programmer will have emp number, language, and whatever other attributes specific to programmer. None of the attributes that are universal to all employees will be duplicated here, with the exception of the key, which obviously is necessary and performs sort of a pseudo, pseudo um, foreign key role here. It enables the information in the superclass to be united with the subclasses. And engineer will look much the same. Engineer will have employee number and uh, E type, you know, mechanical or electrical or whatever other information we might have specific to the engineering subclass. And admin will have employee number. I bet you get the picture there by this point. And of course, in all cases, the employee number will be a foreign key, a primary key, foreign key, you know, like we just talked about. And uh, words per minute and apps they're familiar with and whatever other sort of information. This will always work. Doesn't matter whether uh, participation in the subclasses is mandatory. Doesn't matter whether the specialization is disjoint or overlapping. Although it occurs to me I should have my use in the diagram here. Um, so it always works, but it also, also always maximizes the number of tables that the translation results in, which as we know, has consequences for performance. You want to minimize your tables to get the best possible performance. Here we are in fact maximizing those tables. So that is not ideal. Okay. All right, next option, and I'll write it right down here. It uh, is subclass only. And it only works, as you might imagine, when there is mandatory participation in the subclasses. And why is that? Because this technique will result in only, in relations only for the subclasses. So obviously, all employees must belong to one subclass. That's a must. 
it also works most elegantly when this is oh, sorry about that disjoint that's this is not this is not a must but it really works best with disjoint so what would this translation look like programmer and employee number and name and address and contact information and languages and all the other information specific to the programmer subclass and that's that and we would have engineer and once again we'd have employee number and critically all the other information common to all employees uh, name and address and contact information and so forth and engineering type and the other attributes related exclusively to engineers and there we go and admin once again I bet you get the pattern emp number all the other information uh, common to all employees name address contact information then words per minute and all the other attributes related exclusively to admins okay so you can see the reason why participation must be mandatory in the subclasses because there's only subclasses to hold the information so if we have employees who have who don't participate in being one of these subclasses then there's nowhere to store their information obviously that won't work so that's that's a no-no why disjoint is really um, the best way to go here is well well because these are individual relations and will result ultimately in individual tables the fact that you could have a primary key that is the same for a given employee say there's an employee who's a programmer and engineer you know in this situation that could certainly be possible for software engineers I don't know if you'd classify them as such but in any case so you got employee number um, seven has an entry in the programmer table has an entry in the engineer table one you've got uncontrolled duplication of the non-key information that's common to all employees that's bad news and you've got a primary key that's unique in each of these three resultant tables but that is not unique across the union of these three and really we're going to be counting on the union of these three um, programmer union engineer union admin implies the emp table so and we'll be looking at that union when we're interested in answering questions about all employees and so if you have this duplication that can create certain ugliness so I strongly recommend this technique only when you know this is a deal breaker if you if you don't have mandatory participation you can't do this one but also only when this is disjoint and we can't have folks doing multiple subclasses there are workarounds of course you know if there are you know if there are very limited instances of overlap you can classify them as a separate subclass that's not elegant it's a little messy but sometimes it beats the problems that would result uh, or is important enough that you want to minimize the number of tables by eliminating a separate relation for the superclass uh, sometimes a little bit of fudging can be worth the complexity or exposure to um, to a representation problems that it results from okay so there's that one okay finally the one and a half additional alternatives which relate to all in one okay so all in one works whether it is disjoint or not whether it's disjoint or overlapping however there's two different techniques there's one technique for disjoint there's one technique for overlapping so basically all in one is we have an employee an employee relation that covers all of the attributes associated with the individual specializations so we'll have emp number all the other information about the employees that that's shared by all employees then we will have something that we'll get back to in a moment then we have 
um, languages for the programmer and whatever other programmer attributes we have engineering type for the engineer and whatever other attributes specific to engineers words per minute whatever other attributes specific to admins and then we're done okay and this is the basic technique for this generalization specialization whether it is disjoint or overlapping now what goes in this box depends disjoint this box can be filled with employee type which would be an enumerated set programmer engineer or admin okay you see how that works if you if the if the employee in question is a programmer employee employee type would be p and you would know to expect uh, a language and the other programmer related attributes and not any of the others related to engineering and administration now you might be tempted to say well i will be able to back into knowing what type of employee it is based on which attributes that are subclass specific are null and which ones are populated with values of course you don't want to do that necessarily because that leaves you kind of in a jam when you have employees who for one reason or another you have null values in their uh, their subclass specific attributes and that leaves you with no no way of filtering out that type of that type of employee or knowing in a, a given employee in that situation what type of employee they are you would not want to do that necessarily you wouldn't want to do it that's not it's not a good practice okay so what about if it's overlapping if it's overlapping if this is not a d but an o overlapping this box gets a little more com complicated you need a binary attribute per type which is messy now, let's face it so you would have programmer status p status and that would be either yes or no you would have e status also one or zero and you would have a status one or zero so this way you can indicate okay this is an employee who has the status of a programmer thus the p status is one and they have the status of an engineer the e status will also be one and so we can identify their role and their participation in the subclasses but we can also um, capture all of the information. These, either way, certainly, especially with this being disjoint, you're gonna have a lot of nulls. So there's no free lunch. You can have the most number of tables, in which case you have the fewest number of null values, or you can have the most succinct uh, relation set in terms of the number of tables or relations, but then you're going to have uh, it's a, an explosion of null values. Sometimes that's tolerable, sometimes it is suboptimal and you want to go in the other direction. That's really part of the uh, challenge of doing design in uh, the database realm or any other realm for that matter is the trade-offs. You know, when you're designing a kitchen, you can have all of the knives in the kitchen's domain in one drawer and then you always know where the knives are but there's a lot of different kind of knives and sometimes that's going to lead to um, inappropriate storage for a particular type of knife or you know knives that really don't uh, don't belong together and aren't used in the same circumstances and so on and so, so forth so there you have it uh, three and a half mechanisms for translating an extended entity relationship diagram superclass subclass arrangement um, hope that's helpful and revelatory I know that this this video is a long time in coming um, study hard and I will see you online.